um, to AAC and 9-2. Um, so for those of you that are joining in maybe for the first time, I would like to give you a quick uh, uh, preview of what we've been doing so far. Uh, this comes from uh, conversations with our, our customers and a few leads that were interested in knowing more about 9-2, and we thought we'll bring up this series. So there was a part one a few days ago, so if you, um, that, that focus on the high level aspect of, of what 9.2 has to offer, the transformation capabilities, and if you are um, at a point where you're looking to consider any changes, then, you know, what would your next steps be? So if that is something that interests you, and if um, you missed that session, please reach out to us, and we will, uh, we'll be happy to share the material on that. Um, the uh, the plan is for us to dive deeper now, today being a session for ATM and, um, you know, look at all changes or enhancements that ATM has to offer. And then moving forward in the next few sessions, we'll be talking about financials, um, dive deeper into demo sessions and things like that. So uh, it's going to be a continuous process for us. So um, absolutely, um, you know, wonderful if you can send us your feedback, let us know your questions. Um, and let's take it up from here. So for those of you that are dialing in sharp at 11 a.m., we had a few slides running about um, our firm, so I'll give you a quick overview. We are an Oracle partner. We're based here in uh, Pleasanton, California, and um, we have we've operations in um, India, in uh, USA, Canada, India, and Middle East, serving our uh, customers there. Uh, we are Oracle, uh, so we do PeopleSoft. Um, Oracle EBS and Oracle um, OBIE uh, are expertise in these applications. In PeopleSoft particularly, uh, we do ATM, financials, um, CRM, uh, supply chain. So I am, let me me. My name is uh, Shweta Ganatra. I am the ATM practice lead at SU Business Solutions. And I've uh, been working in PeopleSoft for about 14 years, doing a lot of uh, implementations, upgrades, a lot of transformations, ATM transformations. So I hope to bring that experience to this conversation today and talk to you about what, what's new and how the product has transformed over the uh, different versions of its delivery. Um, as far as industries go, we've been, we've been working on um, uh, healthcare, life sciences, higher ed, uh, public sector science, retail, uh, media, and telecommunications. Um, and again, for those of us that have been following us, we have been a part of numerous speaking events. We continue to be that, uh, continue to bring um, or um, contribute to these sessions um, across events um, throughout the year. So with that, I'm going to dive deeper. Here's a quick agenda. Um, let's talk about 9-2. This is a little roundup from from last time's sessions, uh, it being a key investment. And then um, I have some enhancements. This is, again, in conversation with our uh, leads and customers. You know, the top 10 enhancements in their view, in our view, and in a little bit of our analysis on how this can benefit you as well. So, um, and then we'll talk about next steps. A few housekeeping items before we proceed. Um, you are in listen-only mode, as you would have noticed. Um, does not mean to say uh, we do not need your uh, interaction absolutely dependent on that. So please uh, use the chat feature. Uh, connect with the host. If, uh, Arvind Rajan is the host, so um, send him your questions. Uh, and I will be receiving the um, questions before the end of the call today, so we're, we're uh, leaving a few minutes aside for the questions. We will try to answer as many questions as we have um, received so far. Um, in the Q&A portion, but just if there's, there's a chance that we're not able to, then we will get back to you um, before the end of the um, of next week, at least. Again, for any difficulties in audio or visual, uh, please text, uh, please uh, chat with the host and let them know. So, um, decided to talk about <clears throat> all of the uh, features, you know, uh, starting with the tenth one, we believe this is uh, very key, uh, the integrated compensation management. When it comes to uh, the enhancements in compensation, there's, uh, there's numerous enhancements uh, as far as allowing the uh, uh, manager to do um, a lot of uh, water scenarios, and um, in those scenarios, uh, we, uh, in those scenarios, of course, uh, 
look at the performance of the employees, look at um, you know when was the last time any, any uh, employee received a change uh, in salary, and also open compensation cycle changes. So these are, um, you know, traditionally so far, uh, what we've done is when there are any uh, compensation cycle uh, changes going on, HR has to back off from making any transaction uh, job changes to the employee's uh, job data. This is now uh, more proactive, so employees, so it's not a, uh, a delayed uh, job entry change for the employees. Uh, the HR is not uh, inundated with last minute changes or then wait until uh, compensation takes place. It can be done while compensation cycle is open. Um, so that's one of the changes that we believe is really um, beneficial. The desktop integration with um, actually, so for desktop integration uh, with absence management, there is the um, this is a feature that has been required uh, requested by a lot of Oracle customers and um, allows uh, the user to uh, log into um, Outlook without making um, without logging into HCM, people start HCM and then requesting for a leave. It allows managers to do the same thing. So they can they can send in their approvals. The requester for the absence can monitor the approval process. Uh, again, um, all of it without logging into um, ATM. So using this, uh, the integrated connector, uh, which allows them the the flexibility. And this is this is a big win for all customers where uh, you have where they requested it because uh, it it enhances um, it empowers the um, employee to log into the system again. You know, without the need to log into PeopleSoft, but the integration with Outlook. Um, you know, takes place between PeopleSoft, so the it updates PeopleSoft absence tables right away as far as approvals are concerned or when a request is made. So moving on to the uh, learning dashboard again, a uh, very big win for for the for ELM because uh, nine two comes packed with a lot of enhancements. There's the the learning homepage, um, the the intuitive learning search capability. So. Uh, uh, so along with the, the enhanced self service, there is the, the pivot grids that are delivered that are offered in PeopleSoft now, which allow the uh, the user to uh, to run pre-delivered reports, not uh, the ones that that Oracle has delivered, but also um, create their own pivots and then save them for later. Uh, enhance saves time, um, improves their um, experience as far as ATM and ELM is concerned, and. Last but not the least, there is the uh, there is the social capability, uh, the talent summary, and also the the um, integration between HCM and ELM, which is now listed as a an activity guide. So this allows the user a very transparent view of uh, where the integration is taking place. Uh, you know where the roadblock might be if there is uh, any troubleshooting that needs to be take place uh, to take place. And then there's the application uh, talking about the uh, the recruitment. Uh, there's this module. Uh, there's the, the key features plan for for talent acquisition uh, manager and candidate gateway are the uh, the redesign uh, homepage for uh, for um, candidates. So it allows them the the, uh, the ability to uh, have a overall view, a dashboard sort of view for all job openings that they apply for, uh, where they might be in the process, as well as, um, as, well as the, um, the enhanced application, uh, the application review process. Uh, there's guided navigation for candidates, so when they, when they apply, it's again in the form of activity guides, so the, um, they, can navigate to, uh, using, they can navigate using the activity guides between uh, different business processes, uh, and the submit, so there's review processes taking place. The audit takes place at every step in the process. So the submit button is not really available. So the system takes care of all validations and checks, uh, data integrity. And the submit button is only allowed when the process is truly complete. So this, of course, increases the, um, the success ratio for applicants. Again, with this um, uh, enhanced user experience, there's there's always opportunity for a larger candidate pool to, to apply for your open position. So it's a very big win for uh, customers with talent acquisition uh, manager and candidate gateway. 
Then there's the uh, performance management work center. So um, performance management is something, is a function that, um, you know, well, ideally takes place once or twice in a year, but the, the appraisal process is something that takes place throughout the year. So with the work center, it allows, uh, it allows the, the capability for the system to, to capture conversations between the employee and the manager throughout the year. So when there would be, uh, let's say, a congratulatory email or an accomplishment, that might be uh, received by the employee. The work center is, is a place where it, it, hosts, uh, it holds that data and uh, brings it together during the, uh, the process uh, of appraisal. This is, uh, this is uh, one of the enhancements. The another very big enhancement is for, allows for mid-period uh, performance evaluation. So there's not necessary, especially customers with uh, numerous employees um, across different geographies or across different time frames for performance evaluations, this allows multiple uh, open performance evaluations that can um, take place. So coming to the, the five most important uh, uh, enhancements that we believe, again, so the ACM analytics is, uh, uh, went, through, went through a revamp of sorts as far as uh, bringing in data is concerned. So there's the um, analytics are offered as numerous, uh, in numerous modules, especially for the key uh, most uh, executed transactions and business processes. Uh, one of them is the, the health benefit enrollment analytics, which, uh, which delivers a, um, an enrollment statistic. And it's, it's a configurable pagelet that allows administrators to, uh, to display medical plan enrollments by benefit plans. It also allows the, anal this analytics feature allows for administrators to play what if scenarios in the system before actually making changes. Uh, you know, we've received a lot of uh, comments about uh, when, we, when we speak with our um, benefit customers, they let us know that our administrators are tasked when it comes to uh, open enrollment time frame or any compensation changes, they have to work with uh, the compensation team, and they're not able to, uh, they will spend enormous amount of hours just working through the scenarios for changes before they can actually commit those changes. So with analytics and with the standard um, report, that makes it possible. Uh, there is also analytics uh, in the, the time and labor. Um, so the, the all transactions in time and labor can also be listed in uh, through the analytics they're delivered. Uh, they provide the insight into the um, employee's time, into their absences uh, and attendance. And um, this is the analytics are basically offered using uh, people tools uh, pivot grid. We spoke, we spoke off and on about the work centers and dashboards. So um, there's, these have been introduced. Work centers are places for uh, that host um, a lot of uh, either conversations, transactions, individual over, over the time period, especially, uh, for example, uh, performance. Dashboards allow the uh, employees, administrators, and managers to, um, to look at, have a very clear view um, of the, uh, the important transactions that are up for, uh, for them to undertake. These are configurable, pre-configured by, uh, by Oracle, but as administrators, you can uh, configure them um, at your end before you deploy to the users, and users have also the flexibility to make changes to the view. Uh, all of these are also driven by security, so there's, uh, once you have these in place, every employee or every manager has the access to, to them, it's, and that's driven by the access that they have in the system uh, in current state. Another very important feature is the related actions uh, framework. This was um, this is a feature that for those customers uh, who are on the call who are already on a 9x version, uh, you're familiar with this uh, with the related actions framework. Only that um, this feature has now been expanded to go across from HCM and ELM. It goes into financial CRM. Um, and it goes at two levels now. So there's, um, they've, they've empowered this um, uh, feature by allowing it to be present for application level and also for uh, the component level. Again, related frame, um, actions framework is highly configurable, uh, easily configurable by administrators, uh, allows the business process to kick in 
uh, right when um, right when the search ends for the employee for the user. So without having the user to navigate away from the search results, uh, they can kick off the business process from uh, from lay framework. Uh, we spoke about the, the employee manager self-service transactions as well. Uh, in a lot of applications, employees um, and managers have dashboards. Then they have the, the activity guides that are present for them. So depending on a, on a, a benefit uh, life change, they are able to run across uh, the transactions in a step-by-step -step transparent process, which is validated across. Uh, same thing with train stops. Train stops give you a visual uh, on where the activity is, where the business process is, where the data is, and it supports uh, data entry, data validation, and uh, updating PeopleSoft tables until um, the transaction is committed to PeopleSoft. Last but not the least, you have the Update Manager, which is a, um, it includes a fully functional um, application environment. It allows for customers to, uh, to be current, even if they're so, if they're not current, they can they can enter the details of their application in the system, and allow for um, uh, for the system to display uh, the the next step for them. So the customers can also select a single fix depending on their need, a business need, and have the system automatically um, find the needed prerequisites. So this allows this really gives the power back to the uh, customers as far as determining a timeline for when they want to uh, go live or when they want to upgrade or just when they want to apply a, a single fix. So with, the, with these slides, we were wanted to talk to you about um, really the you know, overarching 10 enhancements um, in HCM, but uh, my objective is also to dive into at least some of them given the, the time we have, wanted to spend some time on uh, diving deeper, giving you a few screenshots, more details on some of the very key uh, features, and this is where we let you know, you know, some of our conversations with our uh, with our customers, and and talk to you about them. So uh, there's the um, Outlook integration we briefly touched upon initially. Uh, what it is is it allows a um, the employee the capability to um, to initiate requests for absenteeism um, or time off using their, uh, their Microsoft Outlook. It allows for Outlook to connect with PeopleSoft, so update uh, PeopleSoft tables as soon as the request is made. Then it allows for managers to make the um, approval, uh, also for employees to monitor where in the approval process their request is. So um, if, you're the, if you're a user when it comes to absence management or even uh, performance, so this. This feature is allowed um, for numerous applications, not just ab uh, absence management. It's key for absence because um, it's a feature that has been much awaited. Although uh, this integration is available between Outlook uh, also in performance, it allows for you to manage um, personal events, um, absence events all in one calendar. Uh, for your managers, it allows for them to, uh, you know, if if they receive an out-of-office reply from you uh, using Outlook, they know for a fact that you know where you are. They can access either PeopleSoft or they can just find out the cause, the reason for your absence on uh, using the calendar. How this is done is uh, the employees can request and the, the employees can request uh, their leave using Microsoft Outlook. They can view the status of that request. So you see in the screenshot to the right. Uh, there is this integrator, so there's Microsoft Outlook, but to the right is a, is a screenshot for where PeopleSoft integrates, integra uh, Oracle integrates with um, Outlook. Uh, allows the employee to enter details for the reason for leave, for the duration of the leave, and also for, uh, um, also for managers to approve it. So there's a submit and then there's a save for later. Uh, Microsoft Outlook can also be used for viewing the current balance and uh, there's a dynamic display definition that can be configured to meet business needs. Now, um, in conversation with, um, with some of our customers, we believe that this was, this was truly the, uh, the big win for them because um, it was something that they were uh, waiting for. They were, um, it was something that they would have to maintain separate applications for. Uh, you know, they would have to update PeopleSoft and possibly use an external connector or 
maintain data in two places, in Outlook and in uh, PeopleSoft. So this is, uh, it allows them to make the changes once. It allows for better experience as well. So then you have the uh, talent management uh, dashboard. So here's a screenshot of what uh, a talent management uh, dashboard looks like. It is, uh, you know, the, the page list to the left are uh, quick links which allow for uh, most uh, frequently used transactions for uh, any user level. So this is from an employee standpoint, but uh, they, they get updated for any user level manager or administrator. And like I mentioned, this, is, this comes pre-configured, but it also allows the user the flexibility to make changes. Uh, you can, um, so there's a frequently used transaction. There is the browse job openings and uh, browse for applicants. And also a visual on, uh, there's, a, there's a graph to the end which, which tells, uh, which shows the time to fill. So there's, there's four such delivered uh, reports for administrators, again, requests from um, customers uh, to Oracle to let them know from a from a planning standpoint what is the time it takes for uh, to fill um, job openings or the ratio of uh, successes when it comes to applicants um, in the uh, job opening process. Then um, the main page is about the job openings, of course, it's from a recruiter standpoint, um, understanding you know the how many days this has been open, what's the action item, if anything, on it, or the total applicants. So it's a very clear view of any actions that they need to take on an immediate basis and any follow-up. So the My Applicants uh, beneath it uh, allows for any follow-up that, that needs to take place. The alerts are configurable by the user themselves. So, um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis when you're logging into the system, how many hires you have to prepare or how many open job, uh, jobs you have to post, uh, how many offers you have to make or how many offers that need to be approved. A uh, lot of alerts can be set, so it's very highly configurable. So um, from our analysis, uh, you know, it's, it's this one-stop access to, to everything that a recruiter needs um, for the applicants, so our alerts, um, listing of applicants, the job openings, interview schedules. Um, again, big win is, you know, the bottom line has always been uh, better user experience, so it empowers the user to, to have a personalized experience with the system. It's not just what every user receives is something that is that caters itself um, in a dashboard view for every user based on what is important for them in their um, uh, day. The quick search links within dashboard, uh, you know, they search for they allow for keyword searches as well as component searches, and uh, it saves time and time and effort. And of course, we mentioned the analytics, the time to fill. There are four delivered uh, pivot tables. Uh, in this view, however, uh, the pivot tables can be, the pivot grids can be uh, configured by the user. It's a very quick uh, five-step wizard and um, that allows the user to create more uh, pivot grids. So here you have the screenshot. And um, the candidate gateway, so as far as the applicant is concerned, it allows for them to, uh, to have the notifications to the right and their activities. So this comes in a, um, in a train stop sort of a view for them. So for on a step-by-step -step basis, they can look at the uh, business process. There's a basic search which allows for, um, for keyword searches um, and also allows them to um, add details to the search. And then the activity. So the any action items that are pending from their end that they can enter. Uh, and again, in, in conversation with our leads, we've you know we've come to know that uh, those that have so this this basically um, gives a gives a very strong point for the candidate gateway uh, uh, application for talent acquisition overall for people or for Oracle that. Um, allows for uh, enhanced capability in the recruitment process. And, you know, uh, when it comes to recruitment and onboarding, the, the smooth, uh, a smooth interaction with the system always allows for a better experience uh, for onboarding and for the new hire process. So there's a welcome screen, which, uh, which is also an avenue for 
uh, a customer to have their onboarding policies out there, so that's configurable to allow um, for your for the um, applicants to understand and better acquaint with your firm while they are in the onboarding process or the interview process. Um, you can customize the welcome message in that. There's the enhanced search feature for um, for applicants. And once they decide that they're ready to apply for, there's the step-by-step the -step, uh, train stop uh, navigation for them that, that guides them through the process. And of course, save, save for later or submit when, when, the, um, when all system checks have been performed. There's a My Notification page, which you know, upon sign-in, uh, uh, the, the applicant can look at the My Notifications and understand you know, what was the action, uh, the action that took place. So there's the online job offers, the review, um, and the act on notifications. So we spoke a brief about uh, the, the dashboard and the work centers in, in e-performance. Uh, here's a work center view for uh, the performance process. Uh, Again, very personalized uh, experience for every, for every user that has access to this system. It allows for documenting of the goals, the competencies, the career summary, and um, not, just, not just the uh, data access, it also allows for the pivot grid view, which gives you the, um, a visual, a graph-like view. Uh, it allows for managers to view the performance documents. Uh, reduces the number of steps. We have, uh, we have a sandbox instance installed and uh, we had a few team players uh, work on this. We found out that the steps to uh, create the performance documents for a manager have been drastically reduced. So again, saves a lot of time, uh, given that uh, managers would have to do this process repeatedly for, uh, people, for their direct reports. It's very flexible and it's a configurable page. Uh, it allows for the mid-period checkpoints. So uh, this is something that's new in, in 9.2, the mid-period checkpoints on the performance documents, and uh, something that can be evaluated uh, later, but allows for the documentation throughout the year. Again, speaking of um, empowering employees with, with better experience, with more control over the system, uh, the Paycheck Modeler is a great feature uh, that, that, is, uh, that has been introduced in 9.2. This is a very mu much awaited feature. So uh, currently, when, when users have to make, when employees need to make some changes, let's say they went through a, a life event change or they just wanted to make some, they had a move in this, uh, you know, between different states, so they have tax uh, implications, or they just want to make some changes to their earnings and deductions. Typically, they have to uh, connect with the payroll department or a health desk uh, support center, which now, uh, you know, that onus has been given uh, back to the employees. So they have the ability to, um, to calculate what-if scenarios. They have, um, in the screenshot on the right, you see the, the train stop for earnings, for changing deductions, taxes, and then calculating. So throughout this process, it can, this can be a very iterative process for the employee. They can go back and forth, switch between employee earnings and deductions, um, uh, update taxes, you know, calculate them. Again, go back and make a few more changes. So all this can take place without updating production tables. Um, it is configurable by the administrator to allow for uh, certain pay groups or to allow for what time in the, in the entire year that these uh, changes can be allowed or the, uh, for updates. And for... Uh, which earnings and deductions. It's not necessary for the administrator to open up um, all of the earnings or deductions for uh, or all pay groups to allow these changes. It can be uh, a selective process by the uh, administrator. As you can see from the screenshots to the right, it's, a, it's very intuitive um, and it's, it's totally free of risk because the employee knows that production is not impacted. Uh, it allows the system validations in place. So um, it cannot get better than this because the employee has a clear shot at understanding exactly what the amount is going to be for their pay uh, once they submit it or once they request a submission. So it pulls in real-time data. Again, uh, if, there's an, if there's an open payroll cycle, then it pulls in you know, from the current pay group the right earning and the deductions allows for the change. You see the, the, um, 
the amount. There is the, the edit button to the right in the screenshot, which um, allows for individual line item edits. And then moving from step to step. So um, overall, you can get the view from the train stop as well. There are modal windows that will let you know. So when it comes to taxes or updating taxes, if the employee is, um, if the state that they move to or relocated to does not allow for, for state tax withholding, then the system takes care of that level of validation. Um, again, our analysis uh, definitely empowers the employees uh, with the ability to plug in scenarios before making any changes, um, not just from the employee standpoint, but also from your employee standpoint. You have your help desk, em help desk employees, the support center folks, your, your payroll administrators, uh, their time gets freed up because they're not spending time answering to these questions and, you know, um, spending time. So there's a lot of time and effort that gets saved. And so you see workload on, on uh, the support centers and help desks. Uh, when it comes to the global search, um, again, a feature that was um, initially introduced in, nine, uh, in version 9, but, but dramatically improved uh, in 9 too because it now um, crosses over to not just uh, ACM and ELM, it crosses over to CRM, financials, and other modules. Uh, it allows for, so you see the screenshot on the right, it allows for um, different modules to be, uh, to navigate the user to it, kicking off the business process right from this search page, not needing the employee to remember uh, their navigation, the menu navigation, which was the case before, and also, you know, having to in, to uh, the ability to uh, kick off these transactions without leaving the search page. So as soon as the transaction gets done, they can move back to the search, create a new search, and then uh, kick off transactions once again. So very flexible view. This is uh, this is allowing for um, better experience and a lot of keyword searches. So this keyword searches or component level searches that can that can be uh, taken place uh, that can take place for the employee and the manager. Uh, the search indices are uh, configurable. Uh, they're driven by user security access. So uh, security is in place. Uh, administrators do not have to worry about, uh, you know, if the moment they have uh, a user set up in the system, you know, this security is extended for uh, the global search feature or the enterprise-wide search feature. And then there is the, the related actions for, for any search results that come. And this, these related actions, uh, could be in CRM, could be in performance, could be in succession planning, uh, that can be kicked off. So it's, um, uh, our, our analysis, uh, you know, has confirmed that this, of course, is an enhanced feature. Um, it's, it used to be application level initially, so it was very limited in scope, but however, is now enterprise-wide and allows for uh, business processes to be kicked off uh, from the search results itself, so without the user requiring uh, to remember navigation, which was in previous case. So, uh, you know, trying to sum up uh, our session so we can move into question and answers uh, shortly, there's the, uh, you know, how can, how can HCM help you transform your business? That is through a lot of ways uh, in integrated mobile, uh, mobile capabilities. There is the um, consumer-oriented recruiting um, user experience, <coughs> the pre-built life events, which is for a better um, uh, ESS experience, and uh, the accurate and actionable search uh, results, and your maintenance processes. So there's, there's more control for you for your maintenance processes. We've spoken about this in, uh, in our uh, prior sessions, so I'll quickly brush through these uh, and switch to a Q&A. So um, how to get there? You know, if, you're, if you are uh, considering, if you're, at a point where you're uh, at a point where you're considering, then of course do a detailed uh, business needs analysis. There's the organizational analysis, and of course look at your infrastructure and see how uh, whether you know what's required from an infrastructure standpoint, we have we have a lot of details on this. We have extended our uh, health check to uh, to numerous clients who are finding uh, benefits from from this detail level of analysis and assessing you know when is the right time for them to consider an upgrade. So feel there's uh, the URL on the bottom that tells you um, if you would like to request one for you uh, for your organization, please let us know. 
other than the transformation, you know, there is the, the readiness assessment. So, you know, um, our, our teams have deployed the readiness assessment for numerous clients as well. You know, we do the uh, very high level, uh, from a very high level standpoint, we let you know, you know, what needs to be done, uh, you know, as far as your upgrade plan is concerned, what are the challenges you may, you may encounter, what are the risks, you know, ahead of time for you to consider before you sign up for an initiative like this. We can let you know why, uh, you know, why, why should you go for an upgrade, how does it help transform. Uh, it's not just about being current anymore, it's not just about uh, leveraging, uh, you know, the, the Delta features in, in 9.2. It is through, truly about transforming the way you do your business in, in HCM. It's transforming the way your, con your, your consumers, your users um, view you as an organization. It is about um, transforming to be the employer of choice. So um, we're happy to work with you uh, on these transformation aspects and, of, of course, help you plan for when uh, to get it started. Do you really need it right now? Is it something that can be a phased out approach? Is it something um, that we can, we can time, uh, we can, you know, document the goals and then, and then move towards them, you know, over a five-year roadmap, three-year roadmap, so on and so forth. So uh, we have a lot of details in this. Um, we spoke about our sandbox uh, feature earlier. We have those up and running at our um, astute labs. Uh, we have our uh, technical consultants working on them uh, to to find out uh, more, you know, more of these features, how they can benefit, to to document. So um, we can deploy the sandbox as well. If that's that's something you're interested in, for your users to take a, a test drive to check out some of these new features, also to see how easy or difficult is it to configure, because nine two allows for a lot of configurable pagelets and um, you do you will need to your administrators will need to configure so before uh, to leverage all of these features so that that's something you want to be able to consult on uh, before you can take that decision and here's uh, again a URL that will give you um, a lot more detail uh, we have some features we have an ebook that's documented very well received by uh, our attendees from the last call um, and some of our customers that are making great use of it. So a lot of information, so you know, bookmark this slide for your uh, benefit, connect with us. Um, and with this, let's jump to the Q&A. And um, <laughs> wanted to uh, talk to you about that. So here's a little bit of detail on our uh, company. We spoke about it uh, initially. There's the upgrades we take, uh, we undertake the implementation uh, support projects, assessments, a lot of assessments that can help you assess, um, you know, from an infrastructure standpoint or from a business process standpoint, uh, when is the right time for you to take a, take up an initiative uh, and uh, move forward with that. Some of our uh, services we we deliver in enterprise solutions um, domains. Um, and also product and solutions. We we we've created our own products. Uh, Fast Track is uh, the, our people our upgrade uh, uh, assistant. So it impacts the uh, analyzes the impact for any customer based on different geographies. That's something that we've been able to deploy. Uh, there's the health check for upgrade that assists our customers to um, to perform health checks and some of our industries that we work on. So there's the uh, Industries and, and solutions, more details to that point. Uh, another, uh, from a broad perspective, a uh, little bit about our PeopleSoft ex um, expertise. We do HCM, financials, uh, CRM portals, uh, campus solutions, and uh, customer relationships. Uh, you know, right from consulting with them on, um, on making recommendations uh, we, we augment, uh, do a temporary staffing if required, implement and uh, help maintain and support your applications, transform them as well. Um, here's a timeline from uh, uh, the Oracle's uh, in a long-term view on PeopleSoft. There's the uh, 9 two, which has been uh, delivered and then what's coming uh, in, uh, what's, what's looking at the uh, horizon for this application and any changes that are concerned. So with that, I wanted to um, 
take a few minutes to thank you for your attendance. Uh, please connect with us if you have any questions. Uh, we'll email the, the deck along with the ebook and some of our uh, solution features uh, for you to be able to connect back with us. And thank you for your time. Hi, everybody. This is Arvind Rajan, the host. Um, just wanted to conclude. Thank you again for your attendance and for your patience today. We had some technical difficulties earlier on in the meeting. If you have any questions, we'll be available for a few more minutes. We have about eight minutes left in the webinar, so feel free to post your questions via chat, and I'll be happy to answer those. You can also follow up with us over email or contact us through our website if you have questions later on after you review the material that we're going to send you. So uh, here's a question from uh, one of the participants. Uh, they're interested in knowing what approach they should take if they want to consider a transformation rather than just a lift and shift upgrade. Shweta, do you want to comment on it? Uh, absolutely. So uh, terrific, uh, terrific question. Uh, you know, take some time to um, to assess where you are at today. So, um, without understanding what uh, what version you are on, I'm assuming you're on 9x. So, a lift and shift will help you if you know if um, you have you have lesser number of users or or lesser geographies. You have a non-union environment that may help you you know shift to your application to 9 to right away just to remain current. Um, when it comes to a transformation uh, standpoint, you want to look at the number of ESS users, uh, your your managers and employees that are online. Uh, you also want to see, um, you know, how mobile are your applications? Do you currently deploy them uh, on iPads, uh, or uh, is that something you are looking to do in the future? A few factors, you know, from the long-term perspective, will help you assess whether you can transform. Uh, we've had we've had conversations with some of our uh, uh, customers who are on 91 today, and you know their their supply they they have financials they have HCM and they they were hoping to do a lift and shift in which you know uh, we went up we went ahead and we we spoke to them we did a little bit of uh, we did a health check for them, and our recommendation was to wait it out but do a transformation instead because it was a customer that was looking to expand they were they had recently acquired a firm and. We're looking to bring on onboard those employees uh, to kick off their mobile arm, and we wanted them to wait it out, have HCM transform uh, the solution for them. So PeopleSoft is a great tool to let um, to empower the customer to do that. So sometimes the best option may be to you know wait for a little bit, maybe a, a month or two uh, in the planning process, and then just transform. It looks like we have more questions. Um, yes, yeah, Shweta, the next question is um, if customers want to go down the path of using mobile applications for PeopleSoft, what within PeopleSoft HCM 9.2 should they consider? Um, so I, I can actually help with this one. Um, PeopleSoft 9.2 has some delivered mobile apps for HCM financials and other applications, specifically in HCM. There is a mobile solution which is new for the company directory, which was not there in previous releases. So that's an out-of-the-box feature that can just be configured and deployed uh, to your uh, mobile devices, smartphones, tablets, and so on and so forth. People Tools 853 also has some very nice enhancements and new features that make um, deploying mobile uh, applications using PeopleSoft much simpler than in prior releases. So. Out of the box, there are one or two that you can take advantage of, but um, your, the ability that customers now have to deploy their own mobile solutions using delivered PeopleSoft a APIs, they are quite uh, quite significant. There's a question. Does the Black Path from 8.8 to 9.2? We have one more question on uh, an upgrade for a customer that's on version 8.8. .8. Uh, sorry, 8.9 going to 9.2, and the question is, is it a single path or a dual path upgrade? And PeopleSoft is supporting a direct upgrade from 8.9 to 9.2, and that was released along with uh, the application when it was GA back in March. So it's not a two-step upgrade anymore. 
So that's all we have time for today. Thank you again for attending. Um, it was a pleasure having all of you on, on the call today. We'll follow up with a, a version of the recording that will be placed on our website and a link for you to uh, revisit this presentation if you have a need to do that and to share that with others in your organization who may have not been able, able to attend today. Thank you all and have a good day.